Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we are going to be talking about AC circuits. So this first assumes that you know everything with DC circuits, and I'm going to be covering a lot of the equations today that we need to know before we even get into any problems. But it is helpful to know DC circuits before you get into AC circuits, because a lot of the equations are the same, a lot of the concepts are the same, like having things in parallel versus things in series. So the first thing we need to talk about with AC circuits is what do they look like? So let's just draw one as an example. I'm going to give you the hardest case, which is a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor all in one problem. You don't always see all three in one problem, but when you do, it's the hardest case because it's all three of them. Now, typically you're going to be given a voltage for this AC circuit. We'll say 100 volts, just as an example. A lot of times, Whenever they just give you a voltage, that means it's the RMS voltage. And the reason why that's important is because there's two voltages you can be given. You can either be given the peak voltage or you can be given the RMS or the average voltage. And there is an equation that converts between the two. If you want to find the peak voltage, then all you have to do is take your RMS voltage and multiply it by the square root of 2. If I give you the peak and you want to solve for RMS, you do the opposite. You divide by the square root of 2. And most of the time, we want VRMS. Why? Because that's the one that we're going to use most of our equations for, specifically power. But most of the time, we want the RMS voltage, RMS current. As a matter of fact, even if they don't ask for it, it's assumed we want the RMS, the average. And that's something they may or may not tell you. Now another thing they have to tell you about the power source, they also have to tell you what frequency it's operating at. Most commonly the frequency will be at 60 hertz because that's what your real life outlets use that you plug in phones in a wall, it's operating at 60 hertz, AC. But in reality it can be any frequency, 60 is just the most common number, so that's the one I'll be using right now. And then we have values for our resistor R, our capacitor C, and our inductor L. I'm assuming you know all the symbols already for those three, so I'm not going to explain them. But what I do need to explain now is a little something called reactance. So reactance is essentially the same thing as resistance, but it's for capacitors and inductors. And for some reason, the symbol for inductor is an L. Don't ask me. And so now we have some equations to share with you today. The equation for reactance in an inductor, XL, that's going to be 2 pi f times L. You can also potentially see it written as omega L, where omega is the angular frequency. But in my opinion, this equation is better because most of the time they give you frequency, not omega. Then we have a similar equation for XC, which is in the capacitor. It's going to be 1 over 2 pi f C, just like that. And once again, if you want to, you can write it as 1 over omega C. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend the left version. So after you find both reactances and the resistance in the resistor, the nice thing about resistors is that there's no equation. You just use the resistance they give you. There's no e equation for resistance. But what we do want to know is the total resistance, and that's what impedance is. So if you've heard of the term impedance, that's the variable Z. And it's basically the same thing as resistance total for an AC circuit. In other words, I can't just add up resistance and reactance for inductor and capacitor. I can't just add them up willy-nilly. And that's because they all point in different directions with different vector notations. Yes, it comes back to vectors again. So we're just going to follow this equation. Z equals the square root of R squared plus xl minus xc quantity squared and the nice thing too is that this equation will work even if you don't have inductance or capacitance or resistance in other words if you don't have a capacitor for instance then the equation would just become z equals square root of r squared plus xl minus zero squared and it's the same thing so basically, if you're missing one of the components, you just fill in a zero there. It's super easy. Hopefully that makes sense. And by the way, we do have our good friend Ohm's law, V equals I times R, except it's no longer V equals I times R. It's now V equals I times Z, the impedance. 
So for instance, if you want to solve for current, you would just divide both sides by the impedance Z and you'll get your current. Remember that you can have a peak current and an RMS current. So make sure you're paying attention to which one you want. Typically we want RMS. And then finally, the last equation we have is the power equation. If we remember from DC circuits, power was equal to V times I. That's almost the equation we have today. It's V times I. And then there's also a cosine of the phase angle there. What the heck's the phase angle? Well, I don't think it's going to make sense to explain it right now. I mean, I could, maybe I'll do it in a separate video, but basically cosine phi is just equal to R over Z, the resistance R over the total impedance Z. There's no actual cosine involved. In other words, I can rewrite this equation as power equals V times I times R over Z, and that's perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, you can even plug in I for V over Z, and what you'll get is power equals V squared R over Z squared, and this equation, I suppose, would work as well, although I never see this one actually written out. I see this one all the time, and that's the one I would use. Another thing to keep in mind, this is the RMS power, which means you need the RMS voltage and the RMS current as well. I suppose technically they could ask for the peak power, but I've never seen a question asked that before, so I don't think they're going to start doing it all of a sudden now. One more thing I want to say, this cosine phi does have a name, it's called the power factor, and it's basically a percentage of how much of your power is real power versus imaginary power, which how can you have imaginary power? I know it's confusing, so don't think about it, but if it ever asks for the power factor, this is the equation, it's just R over Z, very simple. So now let's look at some examples. Let's say I have a 100 volt power source operating at 60 hertz frequency and it's connected to three elements in series. Technically we can also have elements in parallel, maybe that'll be the next example, but it's not as easy as you think. So let's have the resistor be 200 ohms, 26 microfarads, and we're going to have an inductor of 200 milla henry which is the units for inductance and i can ask a bunch of questions here which i will part a i would like to find the current i in this circuit and of course i'm asking for rms current the second thing i'd like to know is the power factor which i abbreviate pf and the last question i want to know is what is the average power delivered to the circuit which remember if they ever ask for average power that's what rms means rms is just a fancy word for average so before i answer any of these questions i actually first have to find the total impedance z and of course we're just going to do that using the equation with all the reactances and stuff like that so let's find reactance in the inductor first it's going to be 2 pi f times l so 2 pi times frequency 60 times an inductance L of 200 millihenry, which we want to convert to Henry. So that's divided by 1,000. 200 divided by 1,000 is 0.2. It's going to be 0.2 Henry. So then I plug that in my calculator, and I will get a reactance of 75.4. I forgot to mention, the units of reactance and impedance and resistance are all the same. They're all ohms. We got very lucky there that all those units are the same. Now we are going to find the capacitance, the reactance in the capacitor. That will be 1 over 2 pi Fc. So 1 over 2 pi F is 60. And C is 26 micro, which means 26 times 10 to the minus 6th. And then I just plug this in my calculator. Make sure when you're plugging in your calculator that you put the whole denominator in parentheses or you will get the wrong answer. And it looks like I am going to get a reactance of 102 ohms for that one. And finally, I want to find my total impedance Z using the equation square root of R squared plus quantity XL minus XC squared. And that's just going to be the square root of, we said the resistance was 200 ohms. So 200 squared plus XL, which is 75.4 minus xc 102 that whole thing squared and then i can just plug this in my calculator and it looks like i will get a final impedance 
of 201.8, that is ohms, and there is our total impedance. You'll notice it is very close to the 200 ohms from the resistor, and that is just a coincidence, doesn't mean anything. Although I will say it means that the power factor is going to be very high when we calculate for that, which means that almost all the power is real power versus imaginary power that we can't use. So finally, we're going to find the answer to part A, which is we wanted to find the current, I RMS. It's just going to be V RMS over Z, the impedance. So that's going to be, we said 100 was the voltage, and Z we just solved for, it's 201.8. It looks like I will get a current of 0.496 amps. And there is my average current, 0.496 amps. Now for part B, we wanted to find the power factor. If you remember that equation, you can either write cosine of phi, which I don't even have to bother writing, because I can just write R divided by Z, which is gonna get us the same answer, and I don't have to use cosine. So the resistor value is 200. The impedance we said was 201.8. So I just divide those two numbers, and I'll get a power factor of 0.99. What that means in English, about 99% of the power is real. If you want to think of it a different way, in terms of real versus imaginary power, back in Physics 1, do you remember how we had friction and we would lose energy due to friction? The same thing's kind of happening here. When I say 0.99 or 99% is real, I'm saying only 1% is lost due to friction, essentially, which is great. So that's my power factor. And then finally, if I want to find the average power, then all I need to do is use the equation V RMS times I RMS times my power factor, which is going to be 100 times the current, which we said was 0.496, and then times the power factor of 0.99. And that is going to get us an answer of 49.1 watts. So the average power delivered to the circuit is 49.1 watts. And that's basically it for that one. Hopefully you don't have any questions. Let's say I have the following circuit. I have my AC power source. Let's say it's delivering 12 volts of power and it's operating at an unknown frequency. You're actually gonna tell me the frequency. And in this circuit, I have a resistor connected to a capacitor. And if you notice this configuration, yes, they are in series. So this resistor is going to be 20 ohms the capacitor is going to be, let's say, 5 microfarad. And what I'd like to know is what frequency do I need so that the power factor is equal to 0.5? Okay, so how are we going to solve this? Well, first of all, remember that power factor is just equal to the resistance over Z. As a matter of fact, I can even say 0.5 equals 20 over Z. Multiply both sides by Z and then divide by 0.5 and we're going to get a Z, an impedance of 40. Okay, great. Remember, we also have an equation for impedance. It's R squared plus XL minus XC squared. And last time I checked, we don't have an inductor here. So that XL is just going to be zero. So in other words, it's the square root of R squared plus XC squared. But wait, Dan, don't you mean minus XC squared? And no, I don't, because any negative number squared will be positive, as you can see here. So I am going to write plus XC squared. If you didn't know that, and you're doing the math correct, you'll still get that result anyway. So I'm not super worried for you if you don't catch that little shortcut. Now the resistance I do have, 40 equals the square root of R is 20. So 20 squared plus XC squared. And so I can solve for the reactants in the capacitor right now. First thing I need to do, going back to algebra two days, you need to square both sides to eliminate the square root. So 40 squared is 1600 equals 20 squared plus XC squared. 20 squared is just 400, so I'll write that there. And then subtract 400 from both sides. 1200 equals XC squared. And then you just have to plug that in your calculator with the square root. And we'll get a final answer of XC equals 34.6. Okay, perfect, we're cruising along, no problems here. 
And lastly, we have an equation for reactants. It's 1 over 2 pi fc, where we have everything except the frequency. So 34.6 equals 1 over 2 pi f times capacitance is 5 micro. So that's 5 times 10 to the minus 6th power. And then if you want to solve for frequency, first multiply the entire denominator over. So I'm saying 34.6 times 2 pi f times 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Multiply all the constants together, meaning 34.6, 2 pi, and that I'm going to multiply all these together. And I will get 0 0.001087f equals, on the right side I still just have 1, as seen here. And then you just divide both sides by that 0 0.001 decimal. And we will get a final frequency of about 920 hertz. And there we go. That's it for that one. So hopefully that made sense. That was just a quick introduction to everything with AC circuits. Of course, there's a million more problems out there that you can try on your own. If you do have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.